Hey folks, how's it going? Hopefully you guys are having a great day, man. We are finally checking out I Am Alan Partridge. I appreciate everybody who gave me information in regards to the show because there was some confusion about do I need to watch Knowing Me, Knowing You before this. Majority of you guys said no. Dude, this, this, you can watch the show without watching Knowing Me, Knowing You. It's not necessary to do homework before watching the show. So I'm going to go with the majority of you guys are saying. I didn't go and watch any episodes from that show. I didn't go read any articles and stuff. People sent me articles that I was concerned about. Spoilers for this show. So I avoid that kind of stuff, man. Um, because when I messaged back to, like, and I didn't get a response, I asked people, like, hey, are there spoilers in this for the new show? I didn't get a response. So... I didn't read, some of you who sent me articles, I didn't read them because I didn't get a response back from you guys when I asked you if there are any spoilers or things like that. So, let's just go ahead and jump into this, folks, and we'll definitely talk about it in the end. Time now to hand over to my breakfast host, Mr. David Clifton. Good morning to you, sir. And good morning to you, Mr. Alan Partridge, sir. I uh, heard you laying into the criminals again there, Alan. Uh, the vandals got to your car again. Afraid so. Third time. Scum. Subhuman scum. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn, message oh from Alan. Something to pitch to Tony Hayes at BBC Lunch Friday. Like those earrings. They're gold? Yes, they're old gold. Yeah. Well, that's not really gold, is it? But, uh, <laughs> nice. Dude, this dude's a downer. <laughs> like, uh, like little tears, little wax tears dripping from your ears because they're sad. <laughs> Don't cry ears. You're on the side of a lovely head. <laughs> Sorry, I'm uh, dry skin and flaking again. <laughs> I'm sorry about the cow. So well, sexy. Really, well, you, you're not a cow. And if you were, you'd be a, be a lovely jersey, ripe for milking. <laughs> no, just talking about cows. <laughs> do, do you like milk? No. No, <laughs> no it's, it's, it's not the... It's not, not the no, it's, it's on the side of my car. It says cock, piss, partridge. <laughs> Which, which, is, uh, which is illegal. Is she new? Yes, she is. Um, I mean, I'm basically driving around in an obscene publication. Don't worry about your car, Alan. I'll get Michael to sort it out for okay. you. Okay. Oh, talk of the devil. Vandals, eh, Mr. Parrish, you know? Makes me wonder what it's all about. Yeah. What? Boot. Hi, you know, vandals, you know. What, what is it all about? Oh, about, sorry. You yeah. know, what I reckon is that if they had themselves proper jobs, they wouldn't be up to all this, you know, larking every night. What? <laughs> <laughs> What I'm saying is that, like, they had to sell proper jobs, you know, what I got until, and they weren't dead. You know, a lot of them from broken homes. Oh, sorry, that was just a noise. <laughs> <laughs> all I got there was uh, broken home. Oh, God! And a, a broken home is not an excuse for evil, and, and then make a programme about it. <laughs> anyway, uh, regarding the uh, graffiti, if you could, uh, kill that. <laughs> then, uh, Idea for a programme, uh, Lady Shapes with Alan Partridge. <laughs> and I look at the changing shape of ladies through the ages, <laughs> from fat, chubby ladies of the Renaissance to uh, hard-faced Cromwellian sourpusses to host a millennium barn dance at Yeovil Aerodrome. <laughs> <laughs> Properly pleased, it must not, repeat not, turn into an all-night rave. <laughs> No. Uh -uh. I want a second series. Alan? <laughs> Fight you! Sorry. <laughs> so come in, the door's open. Just me. Oh. Uh, there's tea in the pot. Oh, good. <laughs> ah, it's life saving. I'd effectively be disabled if it weren't for these. I also rang all the companies on the product list you gave me. Uh, Foster's menswear said yes if you get the second series and you wear one garment a week stuff on in air. Tins. Mm. He's an idiot. <laughs> um, is there a neighbourhood watch? Sorry, I'm very close to yeah. you. <laughs> is there a neighbourhood watch system? Uh, I think so, yeah. Right, well, I'll do my stint. Mm -hmm. I'd, uh, I'd want expenses, though. <laughs> and otherwise people start taking it. It flashed on the first yank. I love this house. Alan. One yank, gone. <laughs> Alan, that was Tony Hare's his office on the phone. They put the meeting forward to 12.30 today. Uh, one more question about the house. Uh -huh. um, petrol stations nearby? Shell, about a quarter of a mile. Right. Has it got a mini-mart? Mini-mart. Uh, Scaled-down supermarket fits inside a petrol station. <laughs> Sells pies, antifreeze. Yep, it's got one of those. <laughs> how, many, how, many, how many bedrooms has it got? Five. Five? Mm. God. My five-bedroom bastard house. Mm. <laughs> Great. 
Well, Lynn, let's uh, go off to the BBC. I'm going to be back on TV. I don't know if you... Uh, did you used to watch... Don't worry, Lynn, I'll play it down. And then it says pasture, I can't understand, but then cock and piss. <laughs> Table for two, sir? Yes, but, uh, no, sorry, you. You're, yeah, you're, you're name of hairs. Like to follow me? Yeah, I, I don't think you should see your future <laughs> just at the BBC, Alan. I just think it's time for you to consider moving on to new pastures. H have I got a second service? There's so many opportunities I, no, no, for no, actually, let, let, let me. Actually, let me rephrase that. Um, can I. Oh, no, actually, I'll just repeat the question. <laughs> 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 the fuck does that mean? We haven't met, but I liked your <laughs> chat show. Thank you very much. Has he given you another series? No, he won't give me one. <laughs> <laughs> give him another series, you swine. <laughs> yeah, give me another series, you shit. <laughs> if you come up with anything else, then please, I don't want you to hesitate. At all. Would you like me to lap dance? Do <laughs> stop showing this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, youth hosteling with Chris Eubank. <laughs> Monkey tennis? We don't owe you a living. You are someone who has a proven track record for making mostly bad television programmes. That, that's, that's, that's bollocks. No, it's, it's, <laughs> it's not bollocks. You think you are. <laughs> well, unfortunately for you, I am the chief commissioning editor of BBC Television. Oh, let's forget about all this. I've got cheese! This is cheese! Who the fuck is losing it? <laughs> well, sitting round for haven't you got programmes to make? No, you're on the BBC gravy train. I wasn't expecting that, Lynn. That was a negative, and right now I need two positives. You know, one, one to cancel out the negative and another one, you know, just so I can have a positive. <laughs> this church. <laughs> Let's get people when they're down. I don't want salvation. I just want to be able to say, I'm Alan Partridge. Join me tonight when my guests will be, I don't know, Chris Rea. But it's not that kind of area. Do you like mini Kievs? I love them. But my wife's vegetarian. Doesn't matter, she can have fish. No, she won't eat that either. Oh, forget it. <laughs> you people. <clears throat> uh, mini bar. Right, no, I'll get it myself. Jet! <laughs> Jet! <laughs> Jet! <laughs> no, it's not. It's Kate Bush. What am I doing? <laughs> Jimmy Lewis. There we go. Oh, Christ. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, really yeah. <laughs> no, sorry about that. Oh. Alright, man. He's funny. He's weird. Um... I can see this getting better and better. I can see it getting funnier and funnier. Um, because it was already funny in this first episode of, like, uh, <clears throat> not as for, uh, many funny moments as I expected, because there are a few people who messaged me and, like, really amped it up really high. But, um, it probably just because some of the jokes, man, just went over my head. That's all. Um, I can't quite remember a few of them, but he made a few jokes about some celebrities, stuff like that, that I didn't know who they were. And then he made it, uh, like, almost like a, a call back to his old show, a joke in this moment when there's another thing. And because I didn't see the old show, I didn't get that, so hopefully there's not too many like that, because they ended up make the minority of people who said that I should have watched the other show correct. Um, but, yeah, man. Other than that, there were some funny stuff. He's a goofy character. I can see him get funnier and funnier. The dude said it's way too much. Uh, he feels like, uh, like I don't know, like his personality is like somebody who just doesn't filter any of his information. Anything that pops in his head, he just seems to say it. Um, man. Like when he was walking with an old boy, and like he's like trying to get another show, and he's he had he went through all the effort well not him but the maintenance guy went through the effort of like you know doing a temporary fix and paying over the things to make it not as a, a as offensive and then he goes through and tells the guy what he used to say like dude just say your car was spray paint and call it a day at least it's not as offensive and then move on but he's like walk through this restaurant saying all that that goofy uh all that goofy shit so yeah man i can already tell you just one of those characters who's not, who, who's not gonna filter what he says and <laughs> And, like, he's not even big. Like, he can't understand this guy's accent. And he's just like, what? What are you saying? 
Oh, man. So, I don't know. I actually this has been really, really funny. He sends one of those guys who's, like, really rude but doesn't know he's being rude, but I could be wrong. We'll definitely see. Because I've met a lot of people like that who who aren't like him, but they'll say something or they'll ask questions they shouldn't ask. Um, it's almost like a kid. You know, a kid walks up to you and be like, oh, why are you fat? Or why are you ugly? Uh, they'll just say random things. Like, damn, you little motherfucker. Somebody come get this kid. But that's who he reminds me of. The person, like, somebody who just has, like, no filter, who just says, says what they, whatever pops in their head just fucking pops out. So, but, just my perception now, just from, like, the first episode, I'm pretty sure, maybe, maybe I'm getting his whole personality and stuff wrong, but that's, that's the way I see him now with the goofy stuff that he says. Um, and the things that he points out, like telling that chick that his go- or her goal, her earrings weren't real, but still trying to like flirt with her. You know what I mean? They just put, and then talking about flakes, like him having a bunch of flakes in his hair while trying to flirt with a woman. It's like, dude, why would you do that type of shit? But yeah, I, I definitely can see this show getting better and better and better. And I'm, I, I enjoyed this episode. Like I said, I expected more funny moments because people messaged me saying like, I'm going to fall in love with the show right away because like the first episode is so, so hilarious. It was funny. But I, I feel like I laughed hard at Faulty Towers, um, that first episode. Uh, but like I said, you can't, we can't really judge, judge a show based off this first episode. Or like if we did that, it's so many shows. <clears throat> or at least I'm trying to get out of the habit of like not judging shows by the first episode. Because like I was telling you guys, like when I first watched the op, first the first episode of Office, I was like it wasn't for me, and I walked away from the the, the American Office. And then so many people were talking about how great it was. Then I came back and I liked it the second time around. Um, a little bit further than the series. I, I, I can't remember how I watched, but I think I didn't watch like season two or season three, and then I went back and watched the other ones. I can't even remember so long ago. But I know I walked away from I didn't like it after the first episode. And that's something I try not to do. You can't judge a show based off the first episode. Um, but I have my reasons why I did that for a while, though. A lot, a big part of it was because of cancellations and things like that. And because I was so busy, I didn't want to like really limit my time to something that I wasn't going to enjoy. So that's a completely different, longer story. But this was decent. This was, I enjoyed this first episode. And that is it, man. I don't have much to say. If I think anything else, I would definitely put it in uh, right below the video today. So hopefully you guys are happy, safe, and healthy. And I'll see you in the next one. Later.